Hello everyone, it's Hot Black Mike. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be looking at the Wars of Philip II campaign as part of the Alexander Overhaul V2 mod. Now I'm quite excited about this mod because it's a time period that's not really been explored before. Philip II was Alexander the Great's father. He enacted a number of military reforms which laid the foundations for the army that Alexander used to build his great empire. When Philip took the throne, Macedon was actually quite weak. It was threatened on all sides and had a depleted, obsolete military. Through the military reforms and successful diplomacy, Philip established Macedon as a great power once again. He annexed Thessaly, crushed the Illyrians on the border before invading Thrace and ultimately defeating the alliance between Thebes and Athens in 334. This then led to the League of Corinth, which was great to unify the Greek forces under Macedon against Persia, led by Philip II himself. This mod effectively has all the powers of that era. We have Macedon, led by Philip. We've got the Peloponnesian League, led by Sparta. The Boeotian League, led by Thebes. And the Delian League, led by Athens. We also do have Thrace in the northeast and Illyria in the west. So in this mod, you get to play as Philip II himself. And if you look at the family tree, you can actually see it Alexander as well. First thing I want to consider is the campaign map, and I really do think this is a work of art. The amount of detail that's gone into this map is incredible. It stretches all the way from Italy through Greece, encompassing some of the islands, all the way to Anatolia, or Persia as it might be known. You can see how the scaling works as well, it's very zoomed in. There are quite large distances between the settlements, so you definitely need to build those roads. But uh, yeah, fantastic map, done a great job with this. So next I'll move on to the factions, which I've already lightly touched on. But in terms of the main protagonists of the time period, we have Macedon, which is led by Philip II himself. We move further south we can see the Greek city-states or the leagues. We've got the Peloponnesian League led by Sparta who have settlements on the islands and in Sicily and Italy. We've got the Delian League led by Athens who also have settlements in other areas such as Italy and Sicily and also on the western coast of Anatolia and the same with the Boeotian League which is led by Thebes and also has settlements elsewhere. In terms of the other factions that Philip fought during his time period, we also have the Illyrians on the western coast, and we have the Thracians in the northeast, which do actually occupy quite a large territory. We also do have the Dacians in the far north. They just have one settlement, but they are the barbarian faction. So that's the, what I would call the main factions for this mod, or the focus of this mod, but there are some peripheral powers. We've got Rome itself in the west. We've then got the Italian League and the Samnite Confederation, which are essentially reskinned versions of the Brutii and the Scipii. All three, all three factions use the same pre-Marian Roman roster. We then have Carthage, which has one settlement in the far west, but it was nice that they were able to fit Carthage in. And then obviously in the east we have the superpower being Persia itself. So obviously Persia wouldn't be conquered until Alexander took the throne. However, Alexander is actually in this mod. If you look at the family tree. is zero. Because it's four times in a year, it will take a while for him to actually spawn as a general. I think it'll take about 75 turns or so, but it is possible to essentially play as Philip to follow in his footsteps and control most of Greece and then use Alexander to conquer Persia. But yeah, I do just want to say that I think he's done a great job on, the developer's done a great job on the factions. I really, I really like the 
implementation of the league system instead of just having the individual city states. I think you know it, that is more historically accurate, and that the, the leagues did operate sort of together as opposed to individual city states. So uh, I'm a big fan of having that. It's not really something we've seen before. So great job on the on the factions. Next, I'm going to move on to units. Macedon has a largely similar roster to that of Alexander in the base game, which is somewhat historically accurate because Philip II essentially laid the foundations for the army that Alexander took into Persia. Next, I'll move on to the Greek city-states. Start with the Peloponnesian League. So this roster is very similar to the Greek city-states roster. There are some Macedonian units here, but I don't think you can actually recruit these in the campaign. I think it's just the top line here. I don't think you can get the javelin skirmishes either. But yeah, it's very similar to Greek city-states. You start with the militia hoplites, move on to the regular hoplites, you've got the armored hoplites, and then the Spartan hoplites with a limited range of cavalry. I do just want to say that I quite like the fact the developer has coloured these. So in the base game, they look similar to this, whereas in this mod, Peloponnesian League has been recolored, which I do. It's a, it's a small thing, but it's a nice touch. Next, I'll move on to the Boeotian League, which is essentially just the same as the Peloponnesian League roster that mines the Spartan hot plates, obviously because Peloponnesia has Sparta included within it, so it makes sense that only the Peloponnesian League has access to them. And I'll lastly move to the Delhi League, which is again the same as the Persian League roster. But as before, yeah, I just want to note the, the recolouring is, is quite a nice touch, just so you can tell the difference between the different leagues. So next I'll move on to the other factions then. So we've got Thrace, which is, I think, quite similar to the base game, looks to be. It's got some Hellenic units mixed in with some Barbarian units. A decent roster overall. And then you've got the Illyrians, which is essentially just a boiled down Hellenic roster. There is a bit of a lack of strong infantry unit for the Illyrians, but it's probably not inaccurate at the time because they weren't as strong as the other Greek powers. And then you've got Persia, which I think is just the same as the Alexander base game. And Rome does just use the same roster as the, as the main game, obviously pre Marian given the time period. It's the same for the Samnites and the Italian League. Carthage, again, same as the base game. And I think that is it. Oh, there is Dacia as well. Dacia is just a, a barbarian faction. This has one addition to the roster, I think, being the Sicklemen. The Sicklemen were a unique unit for the Dehe, being the only barbarian faction in Alexander originally, but they've added the Sicklemen into the Dehe roster. So nothing too spectacular in terms of units, but obviously the, the recolouring is a, is a nice touch. So next I just want to go through a few things I found from my playthroughs which will hopefully give you some tips if you do want to give the mod a go yourself. So the lines of sight can be a bit of an issue just because the settlements are so far apart from each other and the map is quite mountainous so there will be large areas of land which are essentially in the dark. So I would encourage you to build watchtowers where possible just to enhance your vision. It will allow you to see where rebels pop up and enemies coming. I did have some trouble finding settlements initially just because the regions are quite big so it can be difficult to find. Now Rome doesn't seem to be able to recruit spies but I have done another playthrough with Mastodon and they were able to and I know that the Greek leagues are able to as well so I'm not sure if that's intended to be that way but if you're playing as a faction that can use spies I would definitely use them to help you find other settlements and see where the enemies are coming because spies have a much greater vision radius than regular units. 
Next thing is, is roads. Because the settlements are so far apart, I would encourage you to prioritise roads as well. That's the first thing that I built in each of my settlements, and in Rome I now have highways. It just allows you to get your reinforcements to the front line quicker to help your main armies, not just speed up your progress through the campaign. The next issue is public order. So if you're starting as one of the Greek leagues, you might have issues with public order, and that's just because they do start with settlements that are quite far apart. So for example, the Peloponnesian League has settlements in Greece, Sicily, Italy, the Greek islands. The Italian League also has settlements in various places, such as near Byzantium in Italy, and along the coast of Anatolia. It's the same for the Ocean League. So because the map is so huge and the settlements are quite spaced out, it can be difficult to keep your public order in check. So for example, if I go to Enos here or Abdera, you'll see that the public order is quite low. 49%, 54%. And that's all because of the distance to capital penalty, which is it's almost unavoidable, but it's really just to say that if you are public order is okay there because they've got a government, but in this settlement, probably not as good. Forty-four percent. So it's just to say that if you are playing as one of the Greek leagues, I would try and prioritise public order buildings. So you know, you'll need to turn down the taxes, which can have an effect on income. But uh, yeah, that's that's all to note on that one. It's not really an issue for. Macedon because they start with a an empire that's quite centralized. It's not really an issue for any other faction, I don't think. Thracians are quite centralized, the same for the Italian factions, Carthage and Persia. So it's really just for the Greek city states. The next point is on the Macedon campaign. So I have tried Macedon very hard. They do start out with 10,000 in the bank, but they are losing 5,000 a turn when you start. I'm a bit further ahead in this game, I've conquered some settlements, but that is a bit of a challenge. And it's primarily because you start with two massive armies. You start with a full stack in Pella and another one in, I think it's the Dona. So it's just a note that if you're playing as Macedon, it is quite a big challenge to keep the money afloat. I think you need to basically use your units to take settlements and not sustain many losses because you won't be able to retrain them so you basically have to use those armies to take multiple settlements until you get back to the to, until you get back to a positive cash position and just a word of note that i did get a lot of offers of ceasefire so try and get money out of those factions if they're offering a ceasefire because that's one way to sort of better your financial situation to conclude, I think this is a fantastic mod centering on a specific time period in history. I think the map itself is excellent in terms of the detail and the scaling. I like the inclusion of the real world characters. So for example, if you're playing as Baston, you can play as Philip II himself and also Alexander's in the family tree. There's also some notable real world Macedonian generals. And I think including that just gives a bit more immersion to the campaign, you get a bit more attached to your generals. I like the implementation of the factions as the Greek League, so you've got the Peloponnesian League, Delian League and the Persian League. I think that's more immersive than just using the sort of individual Greek city-states. The actual buildings and units themselves are largely unchanged, but that does mean that the the pacing of the campaign is, is still fairly quick, it's not noticeably slower like some other mods are, which is, is you know, it's either a good thing or a bad thing depending on what, on what you want. The only issue I really had was just the fact that there are big areas of land which don't have settlements in them, which means that they're in the dark, but that can be solved by using things such as watchtowers and, and spies and the like. But um, yeah, overall, I think this is a fantastic mod. I think it's really the only mod of its kind to centre on this time period, being Philip II's reign. But um, yeah, I think that will conclude this mod review. I definitely encourage you to try this one if you have a chance. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.